This is lesson 20 in our Calculus 3 series, Optimization. Recall that optimization problems are word problems where we want to maximize or minimize a quantity. And just like we had in Calc 1, we're going to have some steps to solving these optimization problems. We're going to read the problem. We're going to draw a picture if possible. We want to assign variables to all the quantities we must find. We want to find relationships, and by that I mean equations, between the variables. We want to describe the function to be maximized or minimized in only two variables. We want to solve, and by that I mean finding the maximum or minimum that we're looking for. We want to check, and we want to reread the problem again and answer in the original language. So let's take a look at an example. We want to find the points on the surface x squared minus yz equals 5 closest to the origin. Now let's take a look at the steps we have for optimization. We want to read the problem. We'll read it again. In this problem, we don't really need to draw a picture. And the variables that we want to find are x, y, and z because we're looking for the coordinates of a point or points. So we already have the variables set up. So the next thing we have to work on is five, find relationships or equations between the variables. Well, the relationship between x, y, and z is x squared minus y, z is equal to five. Step six says describe the function to be maximized or minimized, and we want to describe it in only two variables. Well, we know that we want to minimize distance to the origin. So the first thing we have to do is set up the equation for distance to the origin. So here we have the distance between x, y, z and the origin. We have it simplified. And we're going to want to minimize this function, but notice that if we minimize d squared, in other words, get rid of the radical, and minimize x squared plus y squared plus z squared, we're going to get the same solution. Minimizing d and minimizing d squared gives the same solution. Minimizing d squared is going to be much easier because the derivatives are so much simpler. But notice that d squared has still three variables. And we want to make use of the relationship between these variables to express this function in only two variables and then use a second derivative test to find the minimum. So let's make use of this relationship. The easiest way to substitute in would be to solve for x squared x squared is equal to 5 plus yz. So d squared is 5 plus yz plus y squared plus z squared. Now for convenience, I'm going to call this f of y and z. And we want to find a minimum here. f sub y is equal to z plus 2y. f sub z is equal to y plus 2z. Setting them both equal to 0, we can solve here for z and substitute into the other equation. z is equal to negative 2y. That gives us here y plus 2 times negative 2y is equal to 0. So that's negative 3y is equal to 0, or y is equal to 0, and also z is equal to 0. So we have a critical point here at 0, 0. And we want to test this critical point now to make sure that it is a minimum of f. fyy is equal to 2, fzz is equal to 2, and fyz is equal to 1. So our discriminant d is 2 times 2 minus 1 squared. That's positive. We also have that our second y partial is positive and so we have a local minimum. Now since this is the only critical point in the entire domain of this function, it must be also an absolute minimum. So we found the y and z coordinates of the closest point on the surface to the origin, but we didn't yet find the x coordinate to go with that. Remember we had x squared equals five plus y z, so y and z are 0 here, so that gives us 5. So x is then positive or negative radical 5. So the coordinates of the points on the surface closest to the origin are positive and negative radical 5, comma 0, comma 0. 
And if we take a look at the surface, x squared minus yz equals 5. And the points that we found, x equals positive negative radical 5, y and z equals 0, we can see it does look like those are the closest points to the origin. Let's take a look at another example. A jewelry box is to be made to hold a 1,000 cubic centimeters of jewels. The top is made of gold at $200 per centimeter squared, the front of silver at $90 per centimeter squared, the sides are bronze at $50 per centimeter squared, and the back and bottom are iron at $1 per centimeter squared. We want to find the dimensions of the box of least cost. So let's think about the steps for optimization. Steps one and two, read the problem. Next we want to draw a picture and assign variables to the quantities we want to find. So here's a picture of our jewelry box. And here are the variables that we need to find. We need to find the dimensions of the box, so the length, the width, and the height. Our next step is to find a relationship or relationships between the variables. Well, we know that the volume of this box must be 1,000. So that says length times width times height must be 1,000. Now we want to find the function that we have to minimize, and that's the cost here. So we know that the different metals have different costs, and so we have to figure out which sides, in other words, which areas, are going to be associated with each of those different costs. So let's take a look at what we have. We have the top made of gold at $200 per centimeter square. So the dimensions of the top here, the area of the top, is going to be length times width. And we need to multiply that area by 200. So we have 200 LW plus, it says the front is made of silver at $90 per centimeter squared. The dimensions of the front here are h times l. So we're going to have plus 90 lh. We have the sides made of bronze at $50 per centimeter squared. So the area of each of the sides are h times w, and there's two sides there. So we want 2 times 50 times hw. And it says the back and the bottom are made of iron at $1 per centimeter square. So we need a 1 multiplied by the dimensions of the back, which are the same as the front, that's LH, and the bottom, which is the same as the top, that's LW. So we have LW plus LH here. So this is our cost function. But notice our cost function is still in three variables. We want to make use of this equation here to reduce this to two variables. So pick a variable and solve for it and substitute in. I solved for h here. h is equal to 1,000 over Lw. So we're here so far. And simplifying, we're here. And I'm going to call this f of Lw, and we want to minimize this function. So we want to take the partial derivatives and set them equal to 0. If we solve the first one for w, we get w is equal to 100,000 over 201 L squared. We can substitute that into the second equation. We get 201 L minus 91,000 so I'm squaring this and taking the reciprocal since we're dividing by it. So we've got 201 squared, L to the fourth, and in the denominator, 100,000 squared. And solving for L, we get that L is either equal to zero, in which case we would have no jewelry box, or L is equal to the cube root of one over 0.0018291, which is approximately 8.2 centimeters. And we're expecting this to give us the minimum cost, but we will test it. With a length of 8.2 centimeters, we can solve for w using this relationship here, and we get w is approximately 7.4 centimeters.
Now let's use the second derivative test to make sure this point gives us a minimum. We take our second L partial and our second W partial, as well as our mixed partial, and we compute D when L is 8.2 and W is 7.4. Even though we're using approximate values here, we're still going to get the same sign for D. We see that D is positive, with our second partial also positive, and that does give us a minimum. So now that we solve the problem, we'd want to go back and check our work, and then we want to make sure we answer in the language of the original problem. So the problem said, find the dimensions of the box with minimum cost. So we need to answer in terms of length, width, and height. So we have to go back and find h. h from the beginning was 1,000 over LW, so that's approximately 16.5 centimeters here. And so we want to answer the question by saying the dimensions of the jewelry box of minimum cost that can hold 1,000 cubic centimeters of jewels are 8.2 by 7.4 by 16.5, where that's the length, the width, and the height. And with this, we'll conclude our lesson on optimization.